Hello and welcome or welcome back to Before Chronicles. Today I'm going to rank some of the romances that I have read recently. As many of you know, I have been actively reading more romances, trying to find ones that I like because I've disliked so many. So while I have had some complete fails, there have also been some that I've really enjoyed. I have 12 books. All of them are the first in a series of romance companion novels. I chose those specifically because I enjoy them the most. I will have all of the books that I'm talking about today listed in the description in no particular order if you you want to take a glance and see what's here. Also, if you know me well enough and think that you can figure out which books are in my top and which are in my bottom, please do. I'm gonna go ahead and say that this video will probably contain some spoilers. I don't want to spoil anything for anyone but to explain some of the reasons why I like or dislike some things, I will have to give away a little bit of detail. Starting with the bottom of the list at number 12, we have The Wedding Date by Jasmine Guillory. This is about a woman who meets a random guy in an elevator and he needs a date to his ex-girlfriend's wedding, so she decides to go with him. I DNF this book after six chapters, which was about 26 or 27 percent, and the reason was because frankly I don't need racism in my romance. There is a line where some random white dude at the wedding says about our main character, yeah I'd hit that, I've never fucked a black girl before. At that point I had seen what I needed to see and I just decided to quit while I was ahead. After talking to Deshana, I learned that the love interest also says some racist shit later on in the book and I don't have time for that nor would I be willing to root for them as a couple. Coming in at number 11, I have Fixer Up by Tessa Bailey. This is the first book in the Hot and Hammered series, I think it's called. I rated this two stars. This is about Georgie Castle, whose profession is a birthday party clown, and she wants everyone to start taking her more seriously. She is also in love with her brother's best friend, and we watch their relationship unfold from there, I guess. There were a lot of things in this that I hate. If you're a fan of the love interest calling the main character baby girl, maybe you'll like that. I personally hate it. As well as the fact that a lot of this book was just cringy as fuck. I also think that Georgie's obsession with love interest was weird, like Joe from You stalker type weird and not at all cute in any way, shape or form. A lot of this book just really turned me off to Tessa Bailey. Nat from Nerdy Nat Reads gave me the idea to do a drunk series review, which I will do at some point. I just have to actually force myself to read the second and third books in the series. If you would like more of my in-depth thoughts on Fix Her Up, my story graph will be linked in the description. I went on a rant talking about all the things that I hated about this book. So if you're interested, feel free to check that out. Next we have Bromance Book Club by Lissa K. Adams. This is the first book in the Bromance Book Club series. While the concept of athletes getting together and reading romance novels in order to become better partners isn't a terrible idea, a husband giving his wife the silent treatment for three weeks after learning that his wife has been faking orgasms for three years is. A lot of the issues in this book could have been fixed with simple fucking communication. Also, Gavin let his ego get the best of them. I mean, if you realize that your wife isn't having orgasms, you would think that you'd want to correct that, but instead he decided to act like a little bitch baby. I do have a full review of it on my channel, so I will have that linked in the cards and in the description if you are interested. Next, I have A Princess in Theory by Alyssa Cole. This is the first book in the Reluctant Royal series. This one I didn't hate, but I rated it 3.25 stars. It's not even that it was average it was just that one of the major plot points really pissed me off so in this we're following the letty who keeps getting these emails saying that she's betrothed to an african prince and she's like yeah okay you're not about to scam me but it turns out that it is true however when they have their first interaction there is a mistaken identity situation which then evolves into Fabiso just straight up lying to her for way too much of the book and then of course she finds out the truth in the worst possible way Again, a lot of this could have been fixed with communication and Thibiso knew he was wrong and kept saying he was wrong and thinking it over in his head and still didn't do anything about it when he had multiple opportunities and I can't stand that. Then we have Desperate Measures by Katie Robert, the first book in the Wicked Villain series. This is an Aladdin retelling where Jasmine ends up with Jafar. This one was pretty average for me. I don't mind consensual non-consent but in a scene where there had not been a conversation about it between the two characters yet it bothered me on top of that i am not a fan of being called baby girl nor am i a fan of daddy king but if you like both of those then you'll probably enjoy this one 
Next, I have The Trouble With Hating You by Sajin Patel. This is the first in a duology. This is enemies to lovers as well as a workplace romance. In this, we're following Leah, whose parents keep trying to match her up and marry her off. During one of these matchmaking sessions, she tries to run away, but actually ends up running into the guy that her parents are setting her up with. They have a very unpleasant interaction, and then they have to work together. I hated the love interest at first. He was, I mean, Leah's mean, but there's something that Jay did that really pissed me off in the beginning of this one. However, the way that he ended up going to bat for her in the end really won me over. Then I have The Boyfriend Project. This is another workplace romance where our main character, Samaya, finds out that the guy she has been dating has also been dating two other women, so she kind of swears off men for a little while. But then she meets Daniel, a guy at her job. They both work in tech and their love story is really cute. Samaya so got on my nerves in the beginning of the book though so I was really questioning whether or not I was going to end up enjoying this story but she grew on me in the end. Daniel I loved from the moment he was on page and overall it was super cute. There was some miscommunication that was annoying but overall it was a really cute story and I would definitely reread this. I've also completed the series and have a full review of it on my channel. Then I have The Right Swipe by Alicia Rye. This is the first in the modern love trilogy. This is sort of a second chance workplace, not really enemies to lovers, but there's a little bit of hate from one of the characters. We're following Rhiannon, who is the creator of this dating app. She wants to buy another company. The spokesperson for that company that she's looking to buy is the guy that ghosted her a little while ago, so naturally she's pissed. This story was super cute though, and I really enjoyed it, so I'm excited to continue the series. I already bought the next two books. Next we have Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade. In this we are following a main character who likes to cosplay for a popular show that is a little Game of Thrones-ish, very loosely based on Game of Thrones. She posts a picture of her cosplay online and because she's plus size people start saying really shitty things about her. The star of this TV show that she really likes defends her and asks her on a date. He becomes aware that she is someone that he's communicated with anonymously online but she has no idea so he kind of keeps that from her for a long while and that really irritated me. I also didn't like how it seemed like both of them just kind of got in their own way and as per usual a lot of their problems could have been resolved with communication but overall I thought it was cute. I am going to continue the series. I do have the second book already so Hopefully I like that one. Next is Sweet Hand, the first book in the Island Bites series. This one is Enemies to Lovers as well as Force Proximity. It also takes place in Trinidad, which I really like. In this, we're following Sharice, who is a baker. She really hates this guy. I think his name is Kieran. He is a music producer and the two of them have to work together because Sharice's sister is getting married. She's the maid of honor and he's the best man. This one overall was really cute, but again, miscommunication gets in the way because it always does. But I really love the main character and I found the ending very satisfying. Coming in at number two, we have The Kiss Question by Helen Wong. I really enjoyed this one and I was surprised at how much I enjoyed it. In this we're following Stella, she is neurodivergent and her parents are like, you need to get married so we can have grandbabies. She's like, well, if I have to have kids, I have to have sex. So I'm gonna hire an escort to help me get better at sex. The two of them end up falling in love. I really enjoyed this. It was super cute. I love Michael. The way he cared for Stella was just super sweet and I really liked the ending of this one. This book for sure will be on my best of 2022. And coming in at number one is Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert, the first in the Brown Sister series. I do have a full review of each of these books on my channel. This one is also hate to love, but it kind of stemmed from a little bit of miscommunication. The banter between these two is super cute. The reason that I ended up loving it so much was that even though there was some miscommunication, I really appreciate when a character can take accountability for their actions and work really hard to fix them. And that's what happened in this one. And I loved it so much because I feel like sometimes that just doesn't happen in romance. This one also discusses chronic pain, healing from past relationships, dealing with anxiety, and I think it does a very good job of all of those. So this is my favorite romance that I have read so far. I even got 
the hardcover special editions from Illumicrate, and I definitely want to reread the entire series sometime soon. So let me know if you were able to guess which book would be at the top of my list. Let me know how you feel about all of these books and how you would have ranked them. And if you have recommendations for other romance companion novel series that you think I should start, let me know. I had a lot of fun doing this. I'm still going to continue to read romance and try to figure out which ones I like and which ones I don't like. Part of the problem is that I hate a lot of tropes. I hate third act breakups. I hate miscommunication and that's in almost all of them but it is still fun to find ones that I really like because I'm always kind of surprised when I do. But I had a pretty good time with this and I hope you did too. That's all I have for you today and I'll see you in the next video.